Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. Good morning. In this episode, we're going to talk about running Metasploit directly out of Kali. Kali's nice is because it already has a lot of the content pre-built in, and Metasploit's already set up. One of the potential problems, though, that you may come across is when you go into the command line and run MSF console, sometimes the database is not properly connected. As you can see, I'm running MSF console right now. It's going to try to connect to the database, and then it's going to error out. So what I'm going to do is hit a control C to exit out of here, and then show you how to run it or fix the problem when it occurs. As you can see on the screen, we're going to stop the service for Postgres SQL, and then also stop the service for Metasploit. Once they're stopped, we're going to kickstart or restart the service for Postgres SQL, and then also restart the Metasploit service. This helps reconnect the databases. Essentially what we're doing right here is resetting the services so they can communicate properly again. So once Metasploit starts back, we're going to rerun MSF console and see if there's any difference. Sometimes this does take a little bit of time. We're speeding up a little bit. As you can see, it got connected, and we're in right away. One of the first things I do once I run MSF console is just double check to make sure the database is connected, and you do that by db underscore status. And if you want to see the other commands, if you do db underscore and then a tab for autocomplete, it shows you some of the other options. So one of the things that I do like about this is the db underscore nmap ties directly into the database, runs basic nmap commands. So now what I'm going to want to do is find out what my IP address is. So with if config, you can find out you're on the subnet, 10.10.10.0. So the first thing I want to do usually, if I want to scan the same network that I'm on, is db underscore nmap, and then space whatever your syntax is going to be. With this, I'm going to do db underscore nmap, dash a for an aggressive scan, dash o for operating system fingerprint, then I'm going to do dash t for timing, and then just do 5, because I'm scanning some VM systems, and they're directly on the same quote unquote network as this, so I'm not going to cause any potential negative issues. Now that nmap is done, again this was sped up quite a bit, it is now going to be dumped in to the PostgreSQL backend database. So if you type in host, you're going to see all of the content related to the systems we just scanned and potentially even other systems we've scanned in the past. Now, if you want it in a specific project, you can do what's called a workspace. When you type in workspace, it tells you the workspaces that are listed, but if you want to add a workspace, you do workspace, space, dash A, and then the name of the project or the workspace that you do want to create. Then when you want to enter that project, you just type in workspace and then the name of the project. At that point, that is going to isolate any of the scans or any of the hosts that you find or services that you find directly into that one specific section. So when we run hosts, it's a blank project. So now we're going to run the db underscore nmap again. So when we run hosts, we're going to see the two systems that we just were able to scan. And now when we run services, we'll even be able to see the ports that were open. And because we did the nmap-a, we could even see the versions of some of the software that is running. This is a great baseline to start any vulnerability assessment or penetration test. Now from here, it's up to you to find out what exploit goes with what vulnerability. If you like this video, share it with the world. Stay tuned for more cyber secrets. If you'd like to learn more about advanced information security, the Information Warfare Center offers training and certification boot camps to cover your educational needs. Visit us at www.informationwarfarecenter.com.